Hello, hello, it is I, yet again, Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, all of my digital mutants out there, what are we going to talk about today? Well, in a word, let's talk about UVWs, or UVs, or the bane of your existence. However you look at them, we will be looking at them today. So, here in the scene that I have, I actually have a uh, organic head, so... A lot of the a lot of unwrapping is really the process of laying your model flat. So being able to lay that model that you have, lay it flat, so that you can paint on it, either in Photoshop or um, some of the other 3D programs that are out there, some of the other 3D applications out there. So you don't have to just use Photoshop. You can use almost anything you want to. Photoshop's a great program to use because it is all pixel based um, and you can go paint if you're normal if you used to painting you can just paint so some things I want to talk about first with this when you're unwrapping your model one thing that you do not want to do you can turn on NERMS like you can see right now I can put on I can put on my NERMS subdivisions and my subdivisions make my object smooth I suggest to you before you start to unwrap your model turn off the subdivisions just turn them off because if you leave it on right now and then you put an unwrap UVW on it, and I'll show you what happens. Let's go in here and say unwrap UVW. Look at that. That poly count became real, and now my poly count is gigantic, and it's crazy. It's all over the place. So we'll delete this and just say uncheck use NERM subdivision. The second thing that can happen sometimes when you go to unwrap your model, I'm going to put an unwrap UVW on this again, and you'll see there's already some type of unwrapping that was done on here, and I can tell that because there's already seams, like there's already some seams that are on this model. And if I came in here and I actually told this, I actually told uh, Max I want to reset the UVWs, and it'll say, are you sure? And I'll say yes. And you'll notice nothing happened because these are the reset UVs. These are the UVs that started out with this particular model. So it doesn't really help anything by just resetting them. So I'm going to delete that. So I want to get another special modifier. The modifier that I want to use is UVW mapping clear. So by using that modifier and making sure whatever map channel it's on, so I'm clearing map channel 1, if I go in here now and do an unwrap UVW, you'll see that I don't have those green lines all over the place. The green lines are just in the borders of my model, which is what I want because I want to be I want to be able to do my my unwrapping myself. So I want to keep it at the very bottom of uh, or keep it just kind of basic, and because I, I want to do it myself. So. Let's talk about some other tools that we're going to need in here. So I've got this unwrapped. If I open up my UVW unwrap, you'll see I can choose vertices, edges, and polygons. So I can choose what I want to um, basically be selecting to make my selections for my UVs out of. So by default, I'll usually either use my edge mode or, vert or uh, polygon mode. Now, I have a, another tool that's actually very helpful with this. If I look up here at the very top of my toolbar, you'll see that there are, this is my regular rectangle selection region tool. If I go all the way down here in the very bottom, you'll see a spray can. This is my actual, I can spray a selection. So if I hold on the left mouse button, the left mouse button, button. if I hold on the left, the left mouse button, and just move it over my over my polygons you'll see it selects polygons as I move over them now currently right now backface uh, ignore backfacing is turned on well actually it's I can I'm ignoring so I am ignoring backfacing polygon so it's not going to select things that I can't see if you see right here select by you'll see this check for ignore backfacing if I turn that off and then I come in here and actually spray across this, you'll see, look, it selected the back of it. So if you have this turned on, it will ignore the back faces and not let you, you know, select those as you're painting your selection. Now you can hold control and continue to add to your selection. You can hold down the Alt key and select and uh, deselect part of your selection. So this is actually pretty standard. If you're used to unwrapping in any other program, 
this is this is pretty much how how it goes. It's pretty pretty close. So I'm gonna do a traditional projection mapping on this first. So I'm just gonna use my paint selection tool. I'm just gonna paint this selection out. Hold down Control so I can keep adding to it. So by holding Control, I can add to it and move around my model and then continue to add to it. Now I'm not gonna get things like the ears. I'm gonna get those on a separate pass because there's a lot more intricate detail inside of the ear. But I want to make sure that I, I kind of have attention to detail to. Same thing with the mouth. I'm not going to take the mouth with this. I'm going to unwrap the head and then take some of the other pieces and then unwrap them separately. So I'm just making a selection. Let's go back. Let's subtract this stuff here. So I'm just making a simple selection. And I can see where this ear is giving me problems with selected things in the ear. And I did not want it to do that. So let's get that stuff out. You have to be very careful. You know, uh, all these programs when you're doing selections like this, you can end up making selections you didn't really want. It happens sometimes. Have to be very di have to be very diligent in uh, how you're selecting things. So I'm just gonna do this part of the face, and let's get in here to the mouth. And now this also plays into how well you set up your topology. If your topology is clean, then your unwrapping is not going to take you very long and it'll be clean too. But if your modeling is poor, and, and I mean by the sense of topology management, then it's going to take you a while to unwrap some of those things that you're doing. There we go. I can get some of this out later on. Is back face even turned on right now? Feels like it's not. It's selecting a lot of my model over there. Things that I didn't want to be selected. So I'm just going through and making my first selection. So let's get in close in here. Let's get into these nostrils. Let's get into these nostrils right here. Let's take some of this back. I'm going to bring it like right here. Hold on the Alt key. Subtract from this selection. Some of the stuff I'll actually stitch in myself by hand. You know, there are a lot of really cool algorithms that uh, Max has like the pelt mapping function which I'll show you as well um, but a lot of times you're gonna wanna do some of this stuff yourself just because of the way that Max can be so I've got all that stuff selected I'm gonna come back and get my regular selection tool and just hold down the alt key and just drag over this stuff and just deselect and I'll actually go into wireframe mode so that I can see what is selected and what's not selected so I don't want to select this stuff in here I'm just gonna drag out on top of it that stuff for the year and I'm gonna get rid of this safe frame it's cutting off my view so just holding on the alt key and I'll turn off ignore back facing just so that when I drag over this I can get everything to come out. I'm going to go into the head and then so there we go. See that? So it's pretty simple. I turned off the back facing so I can drag over these sections and basically take out those those polygons that I did not want selected.
do the same thing to the eye go inside the head and boop boop get that stuff out so yeah you, you know you want to make sure you've cleaned up your selection as much as possible let's come out of wireframe mode alright so you can see some stuff got unselected it's it's just the nature of the beast I'm just gonna hold control and add back the individual polygons that I wanted to that I want to have it's a delicate game of cat and mouse alright so that's what I want getting this stuff like I say it takes a little bit of time but not too shabby not too shabby yeah yep there we go and boom there's the long one more right there so it looks like my selection is pretty good. This is what I want for my selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to my projection types. I'm going to choose cylindrical map. Cylindrical map does just what it sounds like. It puts a cylinder around my model. Now I can tell it to align to the Y axis. I can tell it to align to Z or X rather. I can do Z. I'm going to do Z because Z is straight up and down. And then now that I have this there, I want to I want to be able to just take it and rotate it and as I rotate it you'll see that that green line on it that green line kind of shifts and moves this is the unwrapping area so it'll unwrap from that green line so where this line is at, it basically just breaks it in half and unwraps from there and lays it flat. If I open up my UV editor right now, you can see there's my face. My face is laid flat. If I come in here and turn off the cylindrical map projection, I can now just grab this and move this out over here. So now, look at that it's pretty actually it looks pretty good the face is kind of broken out and that's really what I want with that and I can go back in here and then unwrap individual items like the the ears and the in the mouth and everything else so I can unwrap this model pretty quick so I'm gonna go back in here and get my spray and go to polygon mode and I'm gonna just go in here and make new selections so let's get rid of this And do 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 do. This will be easy because these will be all the way around now. I have to do is make sure that I have all of that. And I can see if I come out of wireframe, I can see my border from my first selection from where the eye stopped on the outside of the eyelid area. Looks like she's wearing like a mask or something almost. So I can see where that stopped at before. So I can see now where this is kind of sitting at and I'm not, do the, I'm not going to do the mouth just yet I'm going to do that separate too so I'm going to planar map this I'm going to say planar map and then the actually turn off planar mapping we need to make sure we we uh, we need to make sure we get this stuff out of there before we planar map anything so go in here just get one of my selection tools and just alt and just drag across it so now all I have so you'll see the bounding box around just what you have selected. So I'm going to say planar mapping and I'm going to planar map this. Looks like it's going to be on Y and it is. There it is. There are my two eyes. Turn off my projection now that I've used it. I can grab this and pull this out. So at this point I can actually take this and be able to scale these. So if I go in here to vertex mode. Right, I can actually come in here and scale these now and scale these around. I can scale them non-uniformly and scale them like this. 
So you'll see the scale tools right here. So I can left mouse click, I can scale them horizontally, vertically, or just all it all together. So I'm gonna choose all together and just scale them all the way down. And let's move them. So you'll see this is where they fit. These vertices belong to those areas right there on my eye sockets. So I can still select one at a time and then move these around. What I really want to do is just select this, move this in here, scale this down, just get my scale and scale this down. Actually, before we scale this down, I'm going to show you some of the other things in here that you can do, which are actually really pretty cool. So I'm going to maximize my UV editor window for a second. As we can see with the eyelids, there are vertices that wrap around inside of the eyelids. So to be able to to kind of be able to clean that up a little bit, I want to, and I'm just looking for, that shows me my edge distortion, so I can see my edge distortion here, and I'm trying to see if this still has, I don't think it does, I think that's only in Maya, yeah, it is. So, I've got kind of this, uh, you know, they're there, but there's a lot of stuff that's laying underneath there. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into face mode. So I'm going to polygon mode, rather, and just select these polygons here. Now, I do have these options of peeling. So if I go here and say peel, watch this. This is pretty cool. I get my move tool. And the peel function lets me be able to kind of resize and drag this stuff. Now, I can put pins in it. So I can come in here and say I want to put a pin in this and pin this down, all right? But realistically, so let's say if I came in here and I start pinning stuff, I can pin this like this, I can take this and pull this this way. So I'm basically just using the, the actual peel to peel open my model and I'm using these pins to to hold things in place as I grab other pieces of my model so let's see and the pins work really well honestly once you understand how to use the whole pinning function it does work well I'm just going to zoom in so I can see this there we go that makes more sense So you can add additional pins, get it where you want it, take pins out, um, do whatever you wish to this. So I'm just getting this where I can see it. And I'm just using the pins to help correct a lot of things. As you can see. And once I've got it pinned, now once you've once you're peeling and this is I'm just using the peel tool. So once you're done peeling this, you can then begin to do the next level of straightening stuff up. So it's pinned. It's a vertice right there. It's like it's broken apart or there's something missing. Could be a little bit of both. So see, yeah, got all my pins in there, so I can come through, excuse me, through, come through, so I can come in here and have cleaned that up. Um, the nice thing about it is I'm able to actually go through and, and easily grab things and break them apart and um, kind of get my pins to work. So once I turn this guy off, you'll see I've got the simple pins are already in there. Now, the other thing is this. As I continue with this, I could have just pelt map this. So this is all selected still. If I come here to my peel function and I look at pelt mapping, what my pelt map will do, the pelt map basically takes this, puts it in a stretcher, 
So the stretcher out here on the outside is stretching this, and it stretches it open. So it's just like pinning almost, except now I can come in here and grab these vertices without having to pin them in place. So in the peel function, you can see, look at that, I've cleaned this guy up. This looks like, once again, looks like something's missing from right here. And the reason why I can tell something's missing, because I have a green border all the way in there. So there's a there's a there's a face somewhere that's missing. So if I if I were to say this is the kind of mapping that I wanted for this, I'll just say commit, and look at that. It just takes it and stretches it open and commits it. I'll do this with this eye right here. Go pelt map. Pelt mapping takes it into its own area of uh, Max. It's still in the UV editor, but it kind of it makes everything else just go away because we're we're pelt mapping this guy here. And yeah, there's something missing right there too. Unless that's a unless that's a viable cut that they made in the eyelid when they were making this model. Because I did not make this model. This model is a use model. And we'll say commit. So you'll see that I've committed both of my eyes, and they are they look pretty good actually. I'm happy with that, and I'm just gonna. It's the only thing that kind of sucks sometimes when you have your selection and then uh, you release it. I don't really I don't need the freeform tool. I just want my face. All I want is my face. My move tool. And I can. There used to be a cage function to select here inside of. Uh, I'll just go through here and grab it out. And this is honestly why you want to make sure that you move your selection off before you uh, release it. Because they're just UVs and they will, they will just sit there on top of each other. Because overlapping UVs is horrendous. It's not too bad. I can just go in here because this is in face mode. This is in polygon mode rather. And I can just go through here and just reselect all of this. It's not too bad. If this were a lot smaller, I'd be kicking myself right now. So grab this and move this off. That's why when you unwrap things, you always want to take what you've just unwrapped, move it off until you're ready to pack it all together. Um, that way, when you, if you have issues like what I just had, you shouldn't have issues like I just had, if that makes sense. So the ear is going to be a pain in the buckus maybe let's see I'm gonna try to do the ear with uh, pelt map so we're gonna try to pelt map this ear so I'm just gonna do this it's gonna make it nice and ganky I'm gonna make sure I have ignore back facing turned on and just drag over the whole ear and then come back in here with my uh, brush and take away what I don't want so I'm cheating just inverting the selection basically and it worked fairly well hold control and add this stuff and let's turn off ignore back facing just for right now I want to make sure I get this all and I think that did a better job so you have to know when to turn off and when to turn on ignore back facing sometimes it actually is a godsend that you can uh, turn it off or on so that is my ear so I'm gonna open up my UV editor there's my ear right there we can see it I'm gonna say pelt map and I'm gonna say start pelt 
And it looks like it did a pretty good job. The only thing here, this is like the inner ear portion. This is going to be jumbled up anyway. Now, I can reset this. You can also set to show the local distortions. And I can also turn down the simulation samples. Let's say start it now. You'll see it kind of sits there. I'll say reset. So it kind of ends up sitting there. Now, another thing you actually have, I have something selected. I go in there and pelt. So if I reset this, turn down this, I can say pelt. All right, I can turn this up, reset it. So it basically tells it how much to sample and and uh, and try to undistort things. The other thing I have in here is my relax. I can start to relax this. The relaxing kind of keeps going and twirling around doing this it's like this like ballet of of uh of uvs that goes on here now if you don't hit commit it won't stay so if i go in there and go back to pelt mapping i can look at my pelt options so i can straighten my stretcher so i could you know grab my stretcher and say okay i'm going to straighten this and pull this out and get a better look to my stretcher so this is really how pelt mapping in the real or pelting in the real world works. You use a stretcher and stretch out your animal skin and there you got poor little poor little Lucky is you know, now a rug. Lucky the bear. Or unlucky the bear. And I can also come in here and change the pull strength. So I can make these these pull a lot stronger. So if I say start pelt. You'll see, you see that I got a actually a better pull with this than I did last time. If I come in here and pull, set my pull strength, you'll see it pulls it tighter. Um, I can also turn up the stiffness of my springs. So I could come back in here, I'll reset this. The stiffness of my springs, it kind of kind of yank at it and pull it open. I'll just say commit. That that looks pretty good for for my purposes. Uh, I can still come in here and go to vertex mode and still move some of this stuff around in here. Like this stuff in here is kind of still ganky in the ear. In his in his ear hole right here. His ear hole. Now the one thing that's really cool is because I've unwrapped a lot of this head already, I'm just going to go back to polygon mode and I'm just going to select this stuff over here because that's the ear. That's the other ear on the other side. So I don't even really have to do much except go in here and select it because I've already unwrapped so much of my head, you know, it's already kind of gone with it. Now I can see that some stuff got unwrapped with the face and I want to add this to the ear. So I can just go in here and add these pieces at this point. It's just that simple. Sometimes you got to kiss it. got to keep it simple stupid. So I got that. I'm going to go to my pelt mapping. I've got the same settings from last time, so my pelt map should give me a pretty similar result. And I'm going to say commit. And I got my two ears. It's like that it's like that song. I got two phones. No, I don't got two. I don't have two phones. Let me stop joking. I don't have two phones. Actually, I do have two phones, but not for those reasons. Got to get my business on. So, I've got this kind of unwrapped. This is just sitting there. Some of the last things I want to do is I want to do this face. And you can honestly see, if I were not explaining this as I was going along, this is a pretty quick process. I'm going to go inside of her head. I'm going to select inside of her head. I'm just going to do this and go boom. Let's just go, go in here and boom. Go back out to the outside. It's like the Joker. Put a smile on that face. So I'm going to go in here and get my select. And then hold on the Alt key. And then just drag over this stuff. And deselect. All of these pooly goons. Let's make sure the ones in the head didn't get unselected. They did not. So we're good. So I'm going to use the pelt mapping again. So pelt map. Start pelt. Look at that. Yanked open her mouth hole. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Actually, 
let's just reset this because that kind of changed the shape of this a little too much for me. So I'm going to go in here and actually planar map it. And I'm going to map it to Y. That's a better look to the shape that I want. So you can see that sometimes you don't always just want to use the pelt mapping because pelt mapping will open it up and it makes it so let's turn off the projection and the pelt mapping does have a particular look to it that can be you know a little weird in ways what I probably will do with this is actually pin it and just pin pieces of it and get this open get the mouth to kinda of come open like this alright so using the using the pin function here it's probably my better bet because I can control how my mouth opens up because this is what I really want. I really want the mouth to be able to open and lay flat. Something like that. Alright. So I'm just using those. Pin that open. I'll use the same stuff on this side over here. And just pin this open as swell. So there. There we go. I'll turn off of that. And it looks pretty good. And they're all laid out. I can go to vertex mode, grab my vertices, and actually take this and do a little bit of go back to my to my pelt mapping, but actually I don't think I want to do that. I was going to say we could we could relax it, but I think I think that it looks fairly good right now. I'm not, I am not uh, disappointed with it. It's, it's a, it's actually okay. I could say flatten. So I could flatten the mapping. Um, you can do unfold. So I still have some options that I can do with this. But I think that this overall is okay. Um, I can still come in here and scale this down and get it into place where I really want it. Something like that. Because you really want to be able to see your UV so you can paint on them. That's like your big. That's your big. That's your big thing, buddy. So you can see here. Looks like that was kind of like that on the other one. And I did this one separately so I could see in the nostril hole. I'm just going to go to pelt map. And I'm going to start pelt. And just tear it open because let's commit it. Let's move it. Let's rotate it. Rotitulation. And I can also still go in here and use the uh, peel functions to go in there. Actually I think just applying the peel to it cleaned up what I really wanted. Yeah, it pinned it there and peeled it back. So I can still come in here and do this stuff right here and peel this too. And you'll see the peel actually does like a, a, a semi relax with it when it when it does it. So I could grab two pieces and, boop, and just say peel. Make sure I'm in fate. You have to make sure you're in polygon mode when you uh, select for the peel, though. So peel. And you'll see, yeah, that looks kind of good. That so all the thing I had to do is just peel it open a little bit more, and it just kind of finished that off for me. So yeah, yeah. So you can see unwrapping here inside of max is actually not all that bad it's it just takes time 
And it's like anything else, you know, it takes time to, um, it takes time to be able to get through the stuff that you're trying to get through. So just take the time and do it. Uh, that's, that's like the biggest thing is taking the time and being able to do it. Um, it, it's not really hard. Now, the other thing is that some of this stuff I might want to weld back into place. So looking at my UV sheet now, if I go in here and go to polygon mode, all my UVs are gone from the center of this. So there's no UVs kind of floating around in there. So I might want to add my eyes back in here. So if I do, I can do this. I can just come in here. If I click on, if I go in here to vertex mode and grab this vertice, this shows me what vertice this belongs to. It belongs right there. So that vert is the same vert. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to polygon mode. I'm going to grab these two and I'm doing both of them at the same time just because it's going to make it easier in the end by fitting one. I'll have already fit the other one because it's, you know, they're the same size basically. So I'm going to go in here and just scale this down a little bit more. I'm going to scale it so it fits inside of the kind of area. something like that get my move tool move this one over a little bit and I'll hold on alt and deselect that one and then move this one over a little bit so to weld these things back together so to bring pieces back together I can still do that I can go in here to edge modes and you can see that I can stitch to target, I can stitch average, or I can stitch the source. So you'll see if I do that. So right now, if I came in here and I'm glad I looked at this because these guys are upside down. Let's go back and make selections again. I'm just going to undo that and go back in here and so they're upside down so I can easily fix that I can flip these guys right you can rotate them on 90 degrees you can pivot them from center you can align them if you do align it's going to smush them though so the align function is really meant for you to use on the outside edge of things um, and you can also do linear line, you can do horizontal line. I'm just going to rotate them. And then you also can change your spacing on these vertically and stuff like that. So let me move these out. And then let's check what's what. So let's go boop boop and I'm going to go here to edge mode, click on an edge. Okay, that edge belongs up there. So we will go in here. I was sure that there was a, yeah, there we go. So tools, I'm going to flip this vertically. So now if I go to this edge right here, it should line up and it does. It lines up right now. So we're good. So we get these down in here. Get this guy over here on this side. Hold on the Alt key and deselect all of that and then drag this guy over here. So as we were saying before, if I go ahead and get to my edge tool, I can see where this lines up at and I can average and it'll average where that goes to. Or I can say stitch to target so it'll move that to the target or I can say stitch the source and it'll bring that down to that or I can end up saying custom stitch and custom stitch lets me you know be able to align clusters if I don't choose a line it'll turn off like this I can say scale the clusters or not to scale the clusters and then what kind of bias I want you know how much do I want it to go back to that so literally what I would do is I would come in here and select the whole thing I could come in here to custom stitching 
turn this on. Let's turn on custom stitching. And I'm going to say I don't want to align. I don't want to do that. I just want to scale them. And I can choose how I want to scale it or not. So I'll say like that. Do the same thing in here. So now I've got my eyes back in there the way that I want them to be. I'm going to come in here and get the nose. It's got some really weird lines on it. The loop edges are really awkward on this piece. So, boop. Man, see that? They're just really weird. I'm just using the Alt key to take out stuff. But I'm just double clicking loop edges because it makes it easier to get through and select the stuff. The green lines are the border edges where UV islands meet up at. So I'm going to go here to... And you see if you do something like that, it sucks because you can't just do it like this and expect it all to go in there. You want to fit and scale this down. Let's grab it all. So you want to fit and scale this stuff down. Get my move tool. Zoom, zoomy, zoom. And get it into place. So you don't want to just you know, like, oh, well, I can just do it that way. And just, bam, there it is. It's it's going to give you bam, all right. And you're going to be like, oh, no. So I'm going to go in here. And it's actually kind of easier to grab the loop edges in here. Because this doesn't have any intersecting lines anymore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to hold on Alt and deselect all these really weird intersecting lines. Still quick though. Rel relatively. Relatively speaking. And all. So at this point I can come in here and I'll do a custom. Let's see what this looks like. Ew. I think we have the same issue that we had last time. Yeah, this is these are flipped around. So I'm just going to go in here, tools, and say flip horizontally. So let's see. Let's try to do a let's try to do a custom. And that 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 could work because it's just doing the center parts of this. So I could come back in here and go to vertex mode, grab these verts here in the center, and then be able to scale stuff. I'll scale it this way, and I'll scale it this way. And there it goes, it fits. Really what I wanted to be able to do is get to those uh, those nostrils, inside of those nostrils. So this did a, do this did a really good job of uh, cleaning this up. So I'm basically just welding this back together. So, I, you know, I've... Yeah, I broke it all apart, and I can weld it back together however I choose to. So I'm just going to select some of these guys. I think this is kind of distorting a little bit much for me. So I'm just going to kind of bring that out a little bit. So I can do the same thing with the ears. I can do the same thing with the mouth and just get all of this stuff laid out right here so get it all get it all in there now I'm gonna think if the other stuff has been flipped around these are probably flipped around as well so we're gonna make sure that we check that this time before we go in there all brazen and we're like hey so let's check it so I can just check it by just grabbing like a vertice or something and I can see yep this is they got the same thing going on so I'm gonna grab I'm just gonna grab this ear over here and I'm going to flip this horizontally and grab this ear over here and flip this horizontally so they really go like that so they're really like that and I can check that clip that 
If I click on that vertice right there, clicking that vert, I can see that vert highlights. So I know this vertice belongs to that area. I'm still going to take both of these at the same time though and scale them because I want to keep them kind of relatively the same. Relatively. And let's scale them going this way. Just a smidge. There we go. And I hold down the Alt and deselect this guy over here and then move this guy into its new new home over here. So I'm going to go in here to edge mode. Let's just get my edge. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm still going to use the custom stitching method. Now Max and Maya both have stitching methods and all the stuff. So this isn't something that's only here inside of uh inside of inside of Max. So I'm gonna say a line. Let's see. Let's back this off some. 9.3. That's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. So this one here should be exactly the same. Or at least close to it, right? So this right here is boom. Go in here. Now I'm putting three. And I like it. I like it a lot. And we could also do the same thing for the mouth. The mouth is sitting right here. The mouth has all those pins in it, which are fun. Scale this. Move it. Scale it vertically. And go here to edge mode. Son of a no, just kidding. Let's go back and reselect it. And we'll say flip horizontally. Oh. I can reflip that. What did I do? vertically. Duh. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to do custom stitch settings again. And there we go. Now I can always come in here and clean up some of this stuff. I still can move. If I were to come back in here and and be back in polygon mode, I could still come in here and use my pins and, and be able to repin this stuff and change it. All right. But you'll see you don't want to detach it. So if I do this again, make sure you don't say detach. That looks like it still does attach it. That's weird. Well, you used to be able to, to do that. I, at least I thought you could. Maybe you can't. Well, either way, you can still come in here and grab your vertices at this point and uh, move those around to give your, to get yourself kind of set up into some into some stuffy stuff the way you want this to look. And that's pretty clean. You know, I like I like being able to use the pelt mapping with the other mapping functions all together. Uh, once you learn how to use all of these things in, in tangent with each other, 
then your unwrapping process, it's not that hard. It's not that bad. Um, a lot of people, you know, they complain about, oh, God, it's so much. It's so many. I rip. Unwrapping's not that bad. Just, you got to know the tools. And the same tools are available for the most part inside of uh, Maya. Maya doesn't have a pelt mapping function, as it were. It has something, it has, you know, unfold, the unfold uh, algorithm. I don't like working with unfold. That's just me. Some people love it. Some people swear by it. Some people are like, oh my god, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And for me, I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, I can take it or leave it. I don't, I don't really care. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. So, uh, as you can see, though, I've got everything kind of ready and laid out. Everything is, all my UVs are happy in their new little homes. They're all there. Yeah. Um. But everything is kind of uh, is kind of is kind of already laid out. Now I can come in here and I could do I can still do relax. I thought I could do relax. It's, so I can do a custom relax. So I can start the relax process and you see. So you can stop it. You can undo that. Um, you also have the relax until flat option in here, which you can see not the not the best thing in the world honestly well it's not good when you've already got stuff set All right you can say keep boundary points boundary points fixed and then when you start to relax so you can see the boundary stays fixed and then this relaxes in here um you can turn down the iterations of how your how much a relax happens and then you can also do this by um, polygon angles, edge angles, or relax to centers. So, yeah, that's probably the better one right there. There we go. So I can say I apply that. And that's good. You know, I could come in here and I don't think it, I think it, I thought it was supposed to let you delete them all, but I guess not. It's not really a big deal. But, for the most part, that is it. That is how I can lay out my model, lay it all flat. Now that it is all flat, I'll close out my relax. I got it all flat, I'll drag it all back in here inside the UV space. And get my scale tool, scale it all down, get my move tool, move it over. There it is. It's all in there. Over there, over there. I can turn off the, you can turn off the checkerboard at any time so you don't have to see the checker. Um, that is it, my friends. We've done it once again. We have done it. We have done it. So if I look at this now she has been unwrapped and she's pretty she looks she's looking pretty darn sweet if i may say so myself now just because of the way the nature of how this unwrapped here for the head i might uh clean up because i don't i don't know if i want that scene going down the middle of the head like that so i might just cut like right here and you know maybe kind of redo that or maybe even try to pelt map that before I had done it. I've 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 already welded everything together, so I'm kind of I, not that I can't go back and redo it. I just don't want to. Um, so it's all good in the hood, and everything is awesome. So to get this out, to be able to have this, so I could actually paint on it, what I need to be able to do is come here and render a UVW sheet. And that's actually pretty simple to do. But being able to come back in here and open up my editor. So 
with this guy kind of going on in here I will render my UVW sheet but you have to be if I'm not mistaken yeah you have to be in the sub object of this and say render sheet and you see there it is there is my UV sheet so there's my UVW sheet this is what I could take into whatever program and paint directly on top of the UVs and everything would show up the way that I have it currently which is awesome um, and to save this out, you just have to go here and save image, save it out as an image, and then you can go open this up inside of your your preferred texturing program, and then go to town and, and just paint. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, one thing right here, I want to kind of talk about this because these right here, they're not welded. So if I go to this and look at this, I can actually weld these guys together so you'll see when they're welded that the uh, green border goes away because there shouldn't be an interior there should not be an interior green border because those are supposed to be together so these didn't get welded when they uh, when I added them in here that's all let's see I think you probably can get a bunch of these at once yeah you can now the green line on the inside this this green line right here is supposed to be there that's a border edge but this is matching up with the face so there shouldn't be a green border right here this is basically still two separate pieces and that's not what we want we want that uh, one piece we want it one piece Yeah. So we just want it we want it one piece like that. So there we go. And there it is. I probably would Yeah, you, know, you get you start you start messing with UVs and you, you can end up doing UVs all day long. All day. All night long. All night. So there we go. And boop, 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 and boop. So there we are. It's all clean. It's all awesome. And until next time, guys, that's been unwrapping inside of Max. So once you've unwrapped this, I'm going to close this. And once this has been unwrapped, I can take it. I'm going to right click on it and say collapse to and say yes. Now you, you might say, you know, Dr. Media, you just screwed us. All the stuff we just did is gone. Well, watch. If I put a if I put a unwrap UVW back on this. Oh my god, look. All my UVs are already in there. They're already stored. Oh no. So, once you unwrap a model, the UVs are there. The only way you're going to get rid of the UVs is if you come in here, at least inside of Max, the only way you're going to get rid of the UVs is if you're going to come in here and do like a, un, a UVW mapping clear. And that will clear the UVs that you have and let you, you know, basically lay out new sets of new UVs. But other than that, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video series. I know it's kind of long, but there's a lot of process to being able to unwrap inside of Max. Uh, once you know how to use the pelt mapping and the projection mapping tools inside of Max, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I actually sometimes I like unwrapping inside of Max more so than Maya. Now if I had to choose either one of them to unwrap inside of, I would not choose either one of them. I would choose uh, 3D Coat or UV Layout, more so 3D Coat because I like the way its tools work. Um, but if you don't have access to 3D Coat, then you can also unwrap inside of 3D Studio Max. So until next time, my digital mutants, it is I, you guys again, Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media, and I will catch you later.